Hey there guys, I am The Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. So I wanted to have a quick chat today because I think we can all agree that 9th edition has very rapidly got to the point where both the rules bloat in terms of the rules and the campaign books you need and also the general power creep from codex to codex has gotten a little bit out of hand. And whilst the data slates are in theory helping to keep that managed every quarter, I think it's pretty obvious that when 10th edition comes, there may well be some pretty drastic changes coming to help rein in the power scaling and bring things to a more balanced level. And whilst we don't know when 10th edition is dropping, I would be inclined to say the summer of 2023 personally, so just over a year away, but I wanted to today, because I was thinking about it, run through a list of five things that I would personally like to see changed up or amended slightly to help keep the eventual 10th edition of 40k a bit more manageable and just a bit more fun. So let's dive right in and go through the things that I would like to see in 10th edition. It's worth noting of course that as of Warhammer Fest the other day, there have been a few new additions announced with the changes to how command points are generated, as well as a move to free points in the app and on Warhammer Community, so that to an extent does help solve a few of the things that I have been thinking about and that I was going to talk about. It is not a complete fix though, but it is a step in the right direction. First thing I wanted to talk about is the issue of stratagems. Now I personally love stratagems. I think they're a great addition to 40k and I think they're really fun and really interactive and I do enjoy using them. But I also think that quite honestly, you could right now just disappear half the strats from all the codexes and I bet you for a lot of us there would be some that vanished that we wouldn't even notice because we had never even read the entry let alone used it in a game. There is just so so many of them and if nothing else they're pretty much just wasting paper a lot of the time. What I would love to see is a drastic reduction in the number of stratagems in the game and this is where I might lose some of you, but bear with me. Instead of having access to all of them every game, maybe you could choose before the roll off to see who goes first, five or six or seven or eight or ten, I don't know, whatever number they decide upon, that could be your, and here we go, this is where I'm going to lose you, that could be your deck that you bring to the game. This would mean a lot less to track in the game for both you and your opponent. It would help to get rid of all the page turning and having to explain stuff to your opponent. It would get rid of a lot of the horrible gotcha moments where you use a strat or your opponent uses a strat that you had no idea existed and it's just it just ends up being like a feels bad moment because you weren't aware of it. At least if you knew your opponent's deck, you would have an understanding or an idea of what they could do and watch out for it when you were, you know, planning out your, your battle plans. I think also it would add a lot of tactical depth and decision making to both the list building and the pre-game stages of the game like deployment, which I think would be really cool to have. They could make it so that the number of stratagems that you could bring is based on game size or detachments or I don't know, something like that. And this would also help tie in with the reduced command points that they are introducing in the game in the next chapter approved. So you would have to be really sort of cautious and careful as you were putting your list together to choose the right stratagems and make sure you had the ones that you knew you were going to be using. And then you would also still have to decide, are you going to blast them all off turn one? And in which case, if you do, you may be lagging behind for the rest of the game. Or are you going to choose some stratagems that may be more effective in the late game and you will hold on to your command points and then in turns four or five, you know, use some stratagems to turn off obsec for your opponent, steal some objectives or get some last minute secondary points. And it would just add another layer of nuance and depth to how you approach the game, I think. The next thing I would like to see change slightly is just the sheer amount of AP in the game. This is a big part of the power creep issue in the game at the moment, I think, and has meant that almost every gun in the game, even infantry guns, now pretty much ignores at least one point of armor, making things like the previously powerful 3-up armor save just feel really quite rubbish nowadays. Of course, again, they've managed to fix that somewhat for some armies with the Armor of Contempt, but I do still think that in general, there is way too much AP on 
on every gun, pretty much in every army throughout the game. I would personally make a blanket rule that at base level, no basic troop infantry gun should have AP. They could maybe get it via things like Sixes to Wound, for things like the Eldari Bladestorm or whatever, but I think GW should maybe diversify and instead of just using the same reworded, renamed rules over and over again, cough transhuman physiology cough, they should introduce other rules to make armies feel different and unique and fun and fluffy. And one example that I was thinking of is why not let Necron weaponry, the Gauss weaponry for Necrons, on a 6 to hit, auto wound models with the vehicle keyword. It's really fluffy for the Necrons, it harkens back to some of their older rules where they were very good at taking out vehicles, even just their basic infantry. It gives them that oomph of power over just the, the bog standard lasgun or bolter or whatever, and it just feels cool and feels different. You know, they don't just feel like a bolter with minus one AP now. They have something that is unique to them and adds some identity back to their faction weaponry, which I think is something that 9th edition has really, really lost over the course of its lifespan. It's become a very homogenized edition. Another thing I would quite like to see, and this is something on a more positive note, is GW keeping and if possible improving and furthering the terrain rules, because I think one of the biggest wins going from 8th edition to 9th edition is the terrain rules. They add so much more complexity and depth to games, and it's now so much fun, I think anyway, to play a game on a table littered with all sorts of dense terrain and barricades and ruins and forests and all that kind of stuff. It really does add so much to how you play the game and it just makes it so much more fun. So I definitely think going into 10th edition they should keep going with that, improve upon it, add to it, and they can really go as far out as they want because the good thing about terrain is that it's one of those things that you can decide with your opponent before the game so you can really go all in and make it as complicated and as in-depth as you want. Or if you just want a quick simple game, you can just say, okay, everything here counts as a ruin or a building or a forest or whatever, and just make it nice and straightforward for yourself. They could even introduce maybe some kind of create your own terrain mechanic, which I think would be really cool. And you could choose some attributes that a terrain would have so that if you were running, say, a campaign on a sandy planet, you could have hypothetical quicksand terrain that would, you know, reduce your movement by half if you try to move through it or something like that. They could just really go all out and then let players take as much from it as they want or just take the bare bones that they need to get by. I think it would be a really good idea and it would add a lot more in terms of adding the fun and the interaction to the game because when ninth came out they said that terrain was going to feel like the third player and I, I think it has done that. I think they have done a pretty good job with that. But if they can expand upon that and make it even more engaging and interactive and fun, I would be all for that. The next big thing I would like to see changed is rerolls. And by changed, I mean pretty much get rid of them. Sure, maybe a few niche examples can stick around, maybe in a stratagem or from your warlord or certain characters for certain units, you know, things like Gilliman or the Swarmlord or Gaz or whatever. But in general, Stop letting so many things give rerolls out, because let's be honest, even with the core limitations that most rerolls have, it really isn't hard to get almost your entire army rerolling almost everything these days. And it just leads to escalation, which results in things like Harlequins, which don't let you reroll against their vehicles and have all these other weird janky mechanics that basically just turn off what you can do in the game, which is never fun. Why not just cut the problem out at the root and limit the number of rerolls that players can do in general? Not only would it save time, it would make the game a lot simpler, and more importantly, it would help to massively curb the damage output of armies and mean that it's a lot harder for your opponent to shoot your army off the board turn one if they get to go first. As I said, there should still be some ways to do it because it is a cool, unique buff to have on those rare occasions, but it being so commonplace like it is now, it just it, it just doesn't feel fun anymore. It just almost feels expected. It's getting to the point where it's kind of similar to transhuman physiology, where what was once a really rare rule that made it really unique and fun and cool to see 
is now everywhere. So it's just like, oh, you've got transhuman? Okay, that's cool. You know, it just takes away the the enjoyment of it so much. The last thing that I wanted to see change in 10th edition was a move to a digital living rule set that could be updated on the fly with FAQs and erratas and points changes and amendments and all that. And as of Warhammer Fest, obviously they seem to be taking a step in that direction. So whilst I think there is still stuff to be done from that regard, there is still a case to be made for going fully digital with everything, having all of the rules and updates completely online and just having the codexes for fluff and lore and art. But I don't want to use that as my final wish list option for 10th edition because that is a fairly recent change that GW seems to be uh, working towards anyway, perhaps. So I will end with this one. No more campaign books. No more spreading an army's rules over a codex, a white dwarf, a supplement, a war zone book. None of that, or at the very least, none of that until all of the main army codexes are updated for the edition. Because seeing various factions get numerous supplements and armies of renown before an army like Astra Militarum even gets their codex for the edition is just frankly ridiculous. I get they want to sell new things and introduce new ways for, for people to play their armies and use their codexes, but just get all the main codexes done first. That should be the main focus for the rules writers, surely, when a new edition drops, getting every army up to date. And can you imagine if all the people that had written on and developed the rules and tested all the various Warzone books that we've had through 9th edition and Armies of Renown, imagine if they had all just been working on Codex Chaos and Demons and Astra Militarum. They would all be out by now. And then GW could do some end of cycle supplements and campaign books to bring struggling armies up to, to baseline and introduce some cool new armies of renown for people to play around with. It's just such a backwards, stupid way of doing things, I think, and means that some players don't get anything new or anything to look forward to for years and just have to watch as Marines or Admech or whoever it may be gets Army of Renown number three with more cool, unique rules and interactions, whilst the poor Astra Militarum players in this particular scenario are just stuck with an out of date book. It just feels bad and it's just stupid. So there we go, just a short list of the changes that I personally would love to see going into 10th edition. And I think they would make the game better and make the game more fun for everyone. Now, obviously there are loads of other ideas and uh, suggestions that you may have. Maybe a return to things like Universal Special Rules could be one that you think strongly about. I have probably missed out on loads, but I just wanted to narrow it down to five. So let me know what some of your ideas are for what would make 10th edition better for you. Let me know them down in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. And until next time, I'll catch you later, guys.